Okay. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Bailey and today I'm going to be presenting on the genus uh, Prochloron. So Prochloron is a cyanobacteria. It is in the class Prochlorophyceae, the order Prochlorales, the family Prochloraceae, and like I said, Prochloron is a genus. There are two sister genera, uh, Prochlorothrix and then Prochlorococcus. Um, Prochloron didemnid is the only known species of Prochloron, and this was discovered in 1975 by uh, Ralph Lewin. <clears throat> so over on the right, that's just an image of a microscopy image of uh, Prochloron. It's a uninucleate, unicellular, prokaryotic cyanobacteria. It has spherical shaped cells that usually range from about 6 to 30 microns in diameter. Um, their only means of reproduction is via binary fission, so clonal reproduction. Uh, like other cyanobacteria, they are photosynthetic, and so they contain chlorophyll A. However, things tend to get weird, and this really kind of shook up the science community, because they found chlorophyll B and C-like pigments also in prochloron, and they found that prochloron lacks the ability to synthesize uh, uh, phycobilosomes as well as phycobiloproteins, and they have paired or stacked plavicoids, and all of these characteristics that I just mentioned um, are shared characteristics with uh, green algal species. So you can see how having characteristics of cyanobacteria and green algae species makes it tough to sort of determine where to place prochloron taxonomically. Um, prochloron only exists in warm, shallow tropical waters, and then here only as a symbiont with uh, didemnid ascidians. So this is an image of a didemnid ascidian, uh, Lisa clinum patella in particular. It's the only known species of ascidian that hosts prochloron. So prochloron, prochloron does not exist outside of its host. Um, this Tunicate or sea squirt is found in the eastern Indian Ocean as well as the western Pacific Ocean and then only in tropical regions. Uh, uh, and then in a depth range of about 1 to 28 meters. So um, you're going to see why prochloron is a really good symbiotic pad. Um, prochloron has a very permeable cell membrane which allows um, quick, uh, quick, and, or, sorry, quick uh, metabolite exchange, and this is thought to be the mechanism that drives communication between the symbiont and the host. Um, and so you may be wondering what does a symbiont get by being in the host and they actually found that symbionts within the host have very high levels of enzymes that prevent, uh, prevent cell oxidation which would terminate the cell in the host, which is something that the host doesn't want. Um, they found extremely high uh, chlorophyll fluorescent values of prochloron and much higher than any other cyanobacteria, and it's really only comparable to other higher plant leaf structures like land plants. Um, and it, prochloron has an extremely high energy yield, which is what makes it such a good symbiont to have, and it's, it does really well in both light poor and light intensive conditions. So that kind of alludes to why it has such a broad depth range. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, they had a tough time figuring out taxonomically where prochloron pro fits. So in 1975, when it was first discovered, they thought it was a synecocystis uh, cyanobacteria because of the absence of a mucilaginous sheath. But this was renamed to prochloron in 1977 upon uh, re-examination. And this is when they kind of noticed that it shared a lot of characteristics with green algae. So it made it tough to really wholeheartedly throw it into the cyanobacteria. And so Prochlorophyta was created, and then the genus was renamed to Prochloron. And then in 1981, uh, Lewin again was thinking about the hypothesis that was pr uh, proposed by Murchowski in the beginning of the century about uh, symbiogenesis. And he sort of fitted it to his prochloron model. So he hypothesized that a prochloron like ancestral cell invaded a prokaryotic algal cell, green algal cell, which gave rise to the lineages we see today in green algae. Um, however, uh, La Roche in 1996 actually um, did genetic work and sort of suggested evidence against this. 
and they found that the chlorophyll A and B proteins that are both in uh, prochlorophytes as well as the green chloroplasts and green algae, they found that uh, it was likely that they arose from different lineages, so it was convergent evolution um, rather than a symbiogenesis hypothesis. Um, they also proposed that a ancestral prochloron cell probably had the ability to produce a wide variety of pigments as well as phycobilosomes, but then uh, sort of got off that track and stopped producing uh, phycobilins and just retained the ability to produce uh, chlorophyll A and B. So uh, that gives you the modern genera of prochloron that we have today.